going on, guys? Guys, here we go. Chef PV ATX RC Productions, Zero Ground FPV, baby. Uh, quadcopter.nyc or quadcopternyc.com. Check them out. Thank you, Gannon, for all the uh, help and stuff that you, uh, all just everything, man, from the Liberty Cup, putting me up in your house as well as just uh, letting me organize and help you with your kind of shop and then all the extra little goodies and stuff you got with me with. Um, Thank you, thank you, thank you to Gannon over at Quadcopter NYC. Check them out, guys. I actually had never really heard of uh, Gannon or Quadcopter.nyc or QuadcopterNYC.com. Both of those work um, up until this week at the Liberty Cup. But I met him, and he is just an amazing guy in the industry. He's one of these vendors, guys, that is not about the dollar bills. He's about just getting the right products and keeping the racers up and running, the guys that are flying, flying. And he even works with other vendors when he's told that he's got something that might be somebody else's stuff that might be cloned. He does his best to make sure that he makes it right with whatever company. He's even pulled products off his shelf, just so you know, and has boxes of stuff that he just won't sell because he's been told by other manufacturers or vendors that he might have been had by somebody. So that just speaks to it. So thanks again and awesome. That being said, don't worry about that. We're doing a simple little project here. We're going to be building a uh, Rotor X um, 122. Uh, yes, the RX 122. Um, another thing Gannon hooked me up with for helping him out. In doing so, I wanted to use one of these Maytech LEDs. Now, the Rotor X is really small. And so the only place really to mount it is going to be in where I want it. It's going to be dead center on the bottom plate. But... These LEDs, as everybody knows, are very brittle, and if you land on one, you're going to smash them. So what do you do? Um, there's also some other components on here you got to be careful of. So what I've done already is I've went ahead and I've wired in the uh, wiring lead that comes with it. So we've got that. A um, couple other things that we've got ready. I've only got a little bit, so we're only going to do one, but I have some epoxy. Now this is what we're going to use to seal this bad boy up really nice and good and keep it from getting damaged. How you do that though, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a piece of wax or parchment paper underneath. You're going to need a second piece of wax or parchment paper. This is about, I don't know, a 8 by 8 inch square. You do need it square, so get it cut, get it cut out by folding corner to corner and all that. Um, and I'm going to show you some chef techniques to use this to cover that with this. So here we go. I've got me an old free sky box, which I love these little things. I keep them laying around because they're great little trays for screws and they're great little trays for um, doing stuff like this where you just want to throw it away, but you don't want to waste something. So try to get this all in the camera view here. All right, we've got our epoxy here. We're going to drop it down and we're going to mix it. We're actually just going to use all of it because... I hope it's actually enough to get by. We're gonna mix it. We gotta work quick. Epoxy is a dual step thing, right? So you're gonna take this. I'll show you real quick. The way this works, fold it corner to corner like this. And then you take these two corners and you bring them around each other. Sorry, here we go, this work better. Around each other like this and back up to the top corner. So you're basically bringing corner to corner, one front and one on the back. And you get what's called a pipe, a piping cone basically. So this is what we're gonna use to, like we would frosting or something else. Then you're gonna take this top corner where it's corner to corner and just fold it down a couple times, right? So now you've got a little cone. So you've got a little paper cone. We're now gonna load that cone. It's gonna be a little difficult. Oh, hey, look, that works. No, nah, no, it doesn't. We're gonna load that cone with the epoxy. Try to get it as far in there as possible because you're gonna be using all of it probably and you don't wanna waste it. So try to get it way down in there. I really need to get as much of it as I can because it's literally the last I got. 
All right. So we got that. And now you're going to fold this. And as you do, you might want to, whoa, sorry. Ah. As you do, you're going to want to kind of like, like your toothpaste, kind of push it down. We're going to fold this down. Now, before we get folding too far down and start squirting it out, we're going to go ahead and open up the tip of it. So we're going to open up the tip. And now we're going to use this to what's called pipe or lay the silicone exactly where we want it. So I'm going to lay it over each component I want protected. Because I don't have a lot, I'm going to try to be sparing here. Hope I can make it across each one of these. I'm going to go ahead and hit this middle component too while I'm at it. It just takes a drop. You'll notice this stuff is getting warm in your hands. That's because it's a chemical reaction going on and this stuff is bonding and hardening as we pour. Looks like we've got two more. If I could just get enough. Go ahead and go over the wires if I have some. Yep. Oh, got it. Again, this would have been ideal if I would have had just a little bit more. But I'm going to pipe out all I can now just across the ring. I'm just working around the ring now. Got all the components covered. I left a little plastic covering the switch. and I did that on purpose in case I get a little overflow. I can still peel that plastic back and get to the switches without having to dig any out. So I would definitely leave that on there. And that's about it. That's where we are going to end that. So, whoa. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and scrape up just a little bit that I have here. And there's a couple of spots that I can put over it. Now, one thing, don't worry, guys. I know when you first start pouring it out, you're going to be like, man, that stuff is, uh, that stuff is like white. But as you see, as it cures, it's going to clear up. This stuff is used on all the other LED stuff that you're basically getting that is waterproofed or kind of has protection. That's what this is. So there you go. We're going to let it dry. We'll come back later. We'll take a look at it. But um, you might want to slide it around and kind of clean it off of the wax paper just as you go, just as it starts to dry, just so it doesn't stick too hard. But it should peel pretty much right up. And there you go. We now have a waterproofed and technically smash proof, for the most part, um, LED board to put on the bottom of our Rotor X. So we'll come back in about an hour and we'll take a look at it. Oh, look, you can see it's already hardening. Hey, what's up, guys and gals? So check it out. Chef PV here now. <laughs> uh, we got the LED. It's lit up. We're testing it, but um, it's literally been 10 minutes, well, maybe 15, and it's dry. It's ready to roll. So I just wanted to show you they lit up. It's all good. Pull it apart, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's all there covered up nicely. It's a few spots that I could have done a little better job if I had just a little more, which I'll probably fix myself. But for the most part, there you go. It's nice and covered and protected from, you know, anything jamming into it or anything. So I can now take this and double stick tape it or however I want, put it on the bottom. I might drill some holes. I haven't decided yet. But there you go. Brand new Maytag, now protected, waterproofed, and ready to get crashed or smashed. Um, we'll see how long it takes to break it, all right? Remember, guys, quadcopter.nyc, quadcopternyc.com. Uh, Chef PV, guys, thank you. Zero Ground FPV. Fly safe, fly smart. Fly for fun. Just fly. Have fun. Peace.